Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Rise Me Vacation. A little different from you this time. Uh, this time we are recording this on Thursday to put on a Friday. I've got an anniversary tomorrow. I've got to you know spend time with the wife, stuff like that. It's going to be four years. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not going to be able to do that. Plus, it's going to be uh, 4th of July weekend, a huge weekend around my family. So uh, all of us here, we're all going to be celebrating that pretty hard. So we're not going to be around to be able to give you a live show on Friday like we normally do. But what we did today is we're going to talk a little bit about NFL, not the NFL season, but the NFL postseason. So we're going to go into the playoffs, talk about possibilities for the playoffs, and kind of our unofficial look at who our Super Bowl winner would be if we were to put ourselves in the situation that we're at. So we're going to be using the DraftKings odds to kind of give us our seating. Uh, and then with that seating, uh, we are going to uh, kind of just take our picks. So we're going to kind of see. And so, like I said, it's going to be all based off of DraftKings odds. So if your team is not on the playoffs, it doesn't mean that we don't think they could make it to the playoffs because we actually thought, man, there's some teams that are being left out that I feel like really could squeeze their way in. Mm -hmm. This is all just based off of odds. Off of odds. But I'm joined in the studio by Jeremy Jeremy. How are we doing today? I'm doing pretty good. It's been a long Thursday. Then, obviously, I know we're not going to be able to do some golfing this weekend, but I mean, we got, we got plenty of time to get do some golfing. But, um, doing pretty good. Ready to celebrate the 4th of July with everybody. Then, ready to grill out. But I know I'm not trying to jump to the head, but I know we got some new people to talk about. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let's go ahead and bring them up. It's our new sponsor. A, a huge sponsor for the show. Uh, they've been super supportive so far, uh, more than we could ever Im imagine, more than we could ask for, and that is Big Frig. Big Frig is an amazing product. I know you might be asking, what is Big Frig? What are you talking about? Well, you, you might have used to be, be able to see maybe a little uh, sticker over here uh, that was a competitor of Big Frig. I ended up taking it off and putting Big Frig sticker on instead Good because... Job. Big Frig is a competitor to Yeti, really. I mean, and honestly, I don't even think there should be any competition. I think Big Frig should be the new big dog in town when it comes to coolers. They sent us a few coolers and tumblers uh, to, for all of us to try out. A huge thanks to, to Big Frig for all that they've done for us so far, for sending us some swag. They sent us, uh, you know, like I said, some coolers, and uh, even, even some tumblers. Uh, so they, they kind of got our tumblers with our logos on them and everything. Uh, we're going to do an in-depth review of the coolers and tumblers and kind of what we think of them so far uh here soon but uh we'll kind of give you a, a brief show i mean you've, you've got it down here yeah. so go ahead and bring it up i mean oh. this is the desert camo uh badlands 20 quart cooler uh, an amazing cooler heavy duty handle heavy duty latches on the front of it uh, it's got a bottle opener on each side you've got attachments that can go with it you've got a, a measuring uh, thing on top for those guys who like to go out there and fish and measure your oh, your fish yeah, and uh, the latches on the front are really what got me. I mean, they are heavy-duty latches, uh, and I, I don't know if they would ever break, but I suppose if you're really hard on them, you can buy all of the accessories separate, which is amazing. I think that's a really cool feature. Uh, they've got a really cool divider in the middle, which also substitutes as a cutting board, and then a little basket to go inside the cooler. Amazing product. Uh, I my, The first time I've been able to have my hands on a Big Frig cooler, uh, and it, I guarantee you it will not be the last. Uh, it really is an amazing product. Uh, it's, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's right up there. And then the tumblers, uh, honestly, the tumblers, if you want to compare them to, to the competitors, I think they're just as good, if not better. Uh, the, you know, like I think... I personally really like the the lids. I think the lids, they're on very firm. Uh, and also, you don't have to worry about this thing coming off because it, it took a little bit of work for me to actually pinch the, the bottom of it to get the thing to pop out uh, to be able to wash it. So I, I really like the products that they have made. Go check them out, bigfrig.com. That's B-I-G-F-R-I-G.com. They've got amazing products. Like I said, they've got the tumblers. They have all kinds of cool designs on tumblers in different colors. Uh, Britton and Blake will have to show off theirs whenever they get theirs. I've got to mail theirs out to them. Uh, they've got the sand color and uh, the bright auburn orange. So uh, they're going to be able to kind of enjoy those. Uh, just amazing products all around. So go check them out, bigfrig.com. That's B-I-G-F-R-I-G.com. And they're extremely gracious because not only did they give us some gear for us to test it out and see how we like liked it but they also are giving you 20 percent off for being our listeners they said hey listen we like these guys over at rising to the occasion so if you listen to them you must be pretty cool so how about you get yourself 20 percent off by using code rising 220 that's r-i-s-i-n-g-t-o-2-0 
rising 220 and get yourself 20% off. That is an amazing deal because these coolers, like I said, they compete very well with the competitors, but they're a fraction of the cost. And now we're giving you a discount on top of it. So go check them out, bigfrig.com. Huge thanks to Big Frig and for Brock for setting all of this up. We thank you guys so much for supporting the show uh, and for being a sponsor of ours. You will not be disappointed. Oh, absolutely not. But let's get into it, guys. Like I said, we used DraftKings odds to put together a possibility of what the bracket could look like for the playoffs. Uh, And so this is just kind of a rough, rough estimate. Like I said, if you have a problem with it, don't take it up with us. Take it up with DraftKings. That's who we used for the odds. But let's jump over to it. Uh, We'll kind of look here at the first round. First off, we have our two two number one seeds in the NFC. We've got the Eagles and the Chiefs over in the AFC. Let's look at the Eagles first. Eagles sitting there at plus 250. Ooh. They are favored to win the a- NFC. Uh, do you think that's, a, you know, rightfully so? That's a, that's a low number. Holy that cow. That is very low. Like, I was thinking more like four. Next, like, next up, we're looking at the Niners at plus 425. Well, that's kind of what I was thinking. I was thinking along the lines of four, four and a quarter, 450 maybe. But I mean, that's a... Wow, that's a really, really low number. I mean, coming off the Eagles season last year, I mean, they had a phenomenal season. Then leading it up to the Super Bowl, then unfortunately coming up short. But, I mean, they're definitely going to be another team that you're going to want to look out for. Obviously, with Kelsey in the line, then um, I don't know why I'm they, slipping. They keep, they keep Lane Johnson yeah. on the line as well. Huge, yeah. huge Big keeps. Key. Then just even looking outside, A.J. Brown, then even with um, Jalen Hurts, obviously – being with the Eagles again, it's definitely going to be. I, I don't want to say a repeat season. Hopefully, if it is, it's on the better side than the unfortunate side. But I mean, the Eagles are definitely going to be a be a top dog team again. I think this year. Yeah, I, I like their I like their odds uh, when it comes to. Uh, well, I guess first let's go over to the AFC. The Kansas City Chiefs sitting at plus three thirty, which is also really low. Yeah. So two teams that made it to the the Super Bowl a year ago. Uh, I guess not even a full year ago, but uh, last season. Close enough. And they're both favored to make it there again based mm-hmm. on these odds. Uh, and then we look at the Super Bowl odds, and the Kansas City Chiefs are actually favored to win plus uh, 600, uh, and then the Philadelphia Eagles at plus 650. Both really low when you consider winning all of it, all yeah. of the whole thing. Um, so, so really, really good odds for them. I mean, let's hope that they can live up to the hype. Absolutely. The, the next ones down the list would be the the Buffalo Bills at plus 900, or uh, the Niners at plus 1,000. Wow. So, I mean, we're we're talking these two teams are heavily favored, mm-hmm. uh, and I, I think I think rightfully so personally. Um, but you know, so we we take a look over there. We've got those two at the number one seed, uh, and then let's start off with the NFC. We've got Seahawks versus Lions. That'd be a very fun matchup. That would be uh, two teams that you know. I, so so we look at a, a year ago. The Lions had a disappointing season because they didn't make it to the playoffs when it really looked like they were good enough to have competed in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the Seahawks. They were able to make the make the playoffs. They had a very good year for what they were given. Uh, we, we saw Geno Smith come out and just ball out. Yeah. Uh, Kenneth Walker, amazing, amazing. running back. Uh, of course, you still have DK. DK Metcalf. You've got some. You you you're always going to have a strong defense when you're Seattle. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what it is with Seattle. It's not the same way uh, as as you would you would see. Uh, you know, as far as coaching schemes and stuff, you wouldn't see the same the same reoccurring theme in the NFL as you would in college. Mm-hmm. But it seems like Pete Carroll's got things under wrap when it comes to defense over there. Oh man, Pete Carroll's an unbelievable <laughs> coach. Like, you, despite his age, like. He, I don't exactly know how old he is, but like he's he's one of the older coaches in the NFL. But I mean, he acts like he's one of these brand new coaches come right out of the gate. Then he's just he's not afraid to throw anything at those guys, and they're willing to do it. Yeah. So we've got the Lions are sitting at plus one thousand to win the division. Seahawks at plus uh, eleven hundred. So both sitting right there in the middle of the pack. Yeah. Uh, I like this matchup a lot. I think this, this will be this could be a very fun matchup. Uh, and then we see the Cowboys Saints. Uh, so we've got the Cowboys and Saints. Uh, let's see, Cowboys in a plus six hundred to win their division, uh, or sorry, the, the the conference. I keep on saying division. Yeah. Um, and then let's see, we've got Saints are sitting there at plus thirteen hundred. So uh, yeah, another really fun matchup when you when you take a look at it, uh, and just thinking of what the Saints have been able to put together. We still don't know what's going to happen with Alvin Kamara, but we do know that it, you know with them getting rid of. 
uh, with of uh, Andy Dalton. You know, they don't have him there anymore. And mm-hmm. I don't recall, I don't think Jameis Winston is on their roster anymore. So they've got Derek Carr stepping in as that number one QB. I think this could be very big for them. Uh, hopefully that, that proves to be really good for uh, Derek Carr and for the Saints. But, you know, so another good matchup. And then we jump down to the Vikings 49ers. Uh, another very fun matchup when we take a look at the two teams and what they were able to do a, a, a season ago. So this is really fun matchups overall when we when we take a look at it. Um, but then we jump over to the AFC. We've got the Bills, Jaguars, uh, Dolphins, Bengals, and the Ravens, Jets. Uh, of course, I know you're going to be looking over at the, the Bengals getting mm-hmm. the Dolphins in the first round. If you take a look and kind of predict to what, could be for this upcoming season do you like that if that ends up being your your playoff round i kind of do i know obviously last season well not fully last year in season but we lined up against the miami dolphins that year and i know that was when they um i can't remember which concussion that was for Tua. i want to say that might have been maybe number two that was number two yeah because yeah, the first two. one was against the bills yeah then i wasn't that even during the first series or like in the first quarter of the game that it happened yeah i think to? so it was pretty um, early in the yeah, game it was really early but um obviously now um miami having to is still again then still having tyreek even despite all the stuff that he's going through um i still strongly think that it's going to be a really really fun game either way you're going to have a good quarterback battle between Joe Burr and Tua, then even looking out on your wideouts, obviously, like I mentioned, Tyreek Hill, probably easily one of the fastest, if not the fastest wideout in the league. Then got Jamar, young, fast, not afraid to do anything to get a touchdown. Then you look at both of these teams, and it's really going to be a fun battle between the Dolphins and the Bengals, but I'm not, I'm going to be biased a little bit. I've been a, I've been a Cincy fan since I was a little, little kid. Then even though you went to Cincinnati, I mean you went to Kansas City and didn't invite <laughs> me, I still I'll, I'll still forgive for that. But I mean I don't I'm, know if you will, man. Like I, you keep on bringing it up. I know, as but, if it was yesterday. I but. know, but I mean, <laughs> but I'm still gonna you be think, biased. But. You think I'm made of gold or something, you know? But I, I'm just a host of a small time podcast. I know, uh, but, but I mean, <laughs> but I uh, know it's it really is fun to look forward into the the, the season, but then it's to look towards the end already. of the season, what the odds show, anyways, would be a really fun playoffs. Mm-hmm. You know, just taking a look at the Jets, the fact that they make it over there in the AFC, a lot of people picking them as some some favorites uh, when it comes to winning it all, just because they got Aaron Rodgers and they're adding some pieces. There's some talk that they're trying to get in the door for Dalvin Cook, or really? Dalvin Cook could possibly go to Miami. So two okay. really fun destinations to okay. see him go to. I think going to the Jets could really help them out Absolutely. and stack that team, but for the Super Bowl odds, the Jets actually said 1,800 plus 1,800. Ooh. So, I mean, that's kind of fun to look at. That's high up. But can Aaron Rodgers help this team? I think a quarterback was a big prior, a big problem for them last year, but can he help them to get to the promised land? We shall see. Uh, DraftKings puts them right up there to where it looks like the first round they would have to go against the Ravens. But let's start off over here with the NFC. We're going to kind of go through each of these and kind of make our pick. Oh, it looks like I need to start our tournament first, of course. Uh, start tournament. Now let's go back into it. Uh, and we're actually using Bracket HQ. So shout out to Bra- Bracket HQ. Not a sponsor, not any kind of affiliation, but pretty cool, a pretty cool <coughs> platform. I've used them before uh, for other other stuff like this too. But we first have our matchup between the Seahawks and the Lions. Loser, or the winner has to go against the Eagles. Who would you pick? I know we're looking very far, but who would you pick for the winner of the Seahawks Lions? Maybe what, should we do this alternate? Should we team up on every single one of them? How should we do this? I say we do alternate. Alternate. Okay. What do you think? Yeah, I like I like an alternate. So I'll, I'll let you go first since I've been talking more. Oh Seahawks Lions. Who are you taking for the winner? I'm kind of picking with the Seahawks a little bit. Don't get me wrong. Obviously, with Detroit, with the season they had last year, not the greatest season, but you look at what they had. In stake, like the Troy Lions, they had nothing to lose coming to the end of the season. Even looking for Green Bay when Aaron Rodgers was still there, then that was the biggest thing for them. Because if um, if they won, then Green Bay goes to the playoffs. Yeah. Then obviously Detroit winning bumped completely out of the playoffs. Then I mean it's not the way Aaron Rodgers wanted the season to end with Green Bay, but I mean Detroit like. You look at them last year, they may not have had a great season, like I said, but, I mean, they're definitely another team that can completely come up and sneak upon you. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I like both of these teams, too. I like the Seahawks winning in this. I think, realistically, in my brain, 
Of course, this is projecting way out in the future, but I like the Seahawks to win this matchup. You got two good quarterback battles with Geno yeah. Smith and um, uh, yeah, and two quarterbacks that were kind of counted out uh, because you've got Jared Goff on the other side yeah. for the for the Lions that he mm-hmm. was counted out. Uh, everyone thought that it was a terrible move for the Lions to pick him up, and he showed up. Yeah, he did. He, <laughs> he performed really well with the Lions. Britain can tell you he's a Lions fan. He's, yeah, he did not like the move. He he loves no. er, uh, Matthew Stafford. He wants to stick with Matthew Stafford, but he really was impressed with. Mm-hmm. with uh, the way that Jared Goff performed, too. I, I think I would probably lean Lions, but I like the Seahawks pick. I think that's the more probable pick, so mm-hmm. we'll keep with it. Let's jump down to the Cowboys-Saints. Uh, I've got to pick this one as much as I want to just hit the Saints because I don't want to see the Cowboys win playoff games. I like to see the losing streak just stay alive. I know they won one last year against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but looking at this, man, it's, it's tough because I think the Cowboys have what it takes to make a good run this year and it, it feels like it's always a lead up that way. I think they make it I think they make it this far. I think the Cowboys win this one. I'm not sure that I totally agree with Derek Carr uh, going over there that, that that's going to solve a lot for the Saints. Yeah. I think it can help the Saints a lot to finally have that guy to lean on rather than going between two or three injured quarter, you know, two injured quarterbacks and a guy that plays all over the field. So the Saints are going to be a good team. I like their their odds to make it to the playoffs this year, but I'm going to pick the Cowboys in this matchup. All I think right. Dak and CD, I like they've got some good pieces around them too. So uh, I like the Cowboys to win that first round. Hopefully Ezekiel picked up his remains from last season. Yeah, I hope so. I think they're still laying on the field, but <laughs> he's going to have to pick them up, and Definitely. he still doesn't know where to go. Nope. So, But, yeah, that's the, that's the other thing, too, with Tony Pollard over there now as their main back. I think that's big for them because I think Zeke was just not good for the team. Yeah. He, he wasn't going to do anything for him. But moving on to the Vikings 49ers, this is a fun one. Who do you got in the Vikings 49ers? I honestly – this is a good one to pick, but – I want to go with the 49ers in this one a little bit just because I, like I know everyone had the the quarterback situation with you guys in the 49ers last year, bouncing back, then finally getting to Brock Purdy. Then he definitely showed everybody up. He Everyone was – I, what was it, Mr. Irrelevant? Mr. Irrelevant. Yeah, then yeah nobody, he, nobody he really believed in him from the yeah, beginning. he definitely proved everybody wrong. Then going up against – you got quarterbacks like Tom Brady, you got – uh, I don't remember exactly all their season, but, I mean, you could just lift off Tom Brady. What else can you really say? I mean, you look at it, and everyone says, for the Minnesota Vikings, always talking about Kirk Cousins, he's great on paper, but then come to the game time, it's like a complete flip of a page. Then now not having Thielen, Jefferson, not Jefferson, uh, no, it is Jefferson. No, yeah, they still no, have Jefferson. They do? Yeah. Uh, I don't know why I'm drawing uh, a Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook, yep. there we go. Then – Having those two big key pieces gone, what's that really going to do for Minnesota? Yeah, that like, could be scary. Like you, all you really got to do is rely on Justin Jefferson. Outside of that, I mean, what Kirk else? Kirk Cousins. Yeah, that's <laughs> really it. I mean, you look at last year, Dalvin Cook literally brought you guys back from the biggest upset of the entire NFL. Then winning, what was it, 36-33? 30, 33 to zero, and then they ended up winning. Yep. Yeah. I mean. If you guys can pull this off again, my hat's off to you, but I don't think it's going to happen. I'm sticking with my gut. My dad's favorite team is the San Francisco 49ers, so it's a win-win for me. I'm going to go with the 49ers. I like it. Yeah, I like the 49ers, and really the only reason why they end up losing to the Eagles, which made it to the Super Bowl, and the, the tough, and really one of the toughest teams all season long. Absolutely. The grittiest team all season long. Mm-hmm. The only reason why they really – we're out of that game. I think they they still the, the Eagles still had a very good chance of winning that game, even if they they all stayed healthy. But it's just because they ran out of quarterbacks. Yeah. What are you going to do when you don't have a quarterback? Put Christian McCaffrey back there. Yeah. You know, put, he was put George Kittle option. back there. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I like the odds for the 49ers. Let's jump over to the AFC. We'll start off with the first round over here. See, I guess I have to start off over here with the AFC. We've got the Bills and Jaguars. As much as I love the Jaguars, I really I really like sunshine over there i like trevor lawrence a lot i i think he is a very good quarterback i think he has what it takes to be the guy i think he has a phenomenal season this year but i just don't have enough faith in them overall i think their defense has been kind of off and on uh but not not dramatically right just off and on enough just to give them give up 
at, at the last minute. I yeah. feel like there was too close of games whenever they needed to win them. Mm-hmm. They were coming fighting from behind too much last season. Uh, I think they pull out and have a good season this year. Good job for making it to the playoffs, but if you're going like, going against the Bills, I'm going to put my money on the Bills on this one. I just think with Josh Allen at, at the helm, I think he's an amazing player. We still don't know what's going to happen with Stephon Diggs, yeah. but overall, I, just, I think the Bills are a really good team. I think they still get Von Miller back, yep. so they're going to have him on the field. I don't know. Right now, we're, we're guessing way too early, but I'm going to pick the Bills in this way, way too early there we go. playoff pick. Let's jump on to the next matchup here. We've got the Dolphins and oh, Bengals. Boy. I know we kind of already kind of already spoiled this one. Maybe I should have taken this one from you, but Dolphins, Bengals, go at it, man. Oh boy, um, I'm going to be completely biased on it. Of course, I've been a I've been a Cincinnati Bengals fan since I was a little little kid. It's like a deja vu. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, between the Dolphins and the Bengals, I'm going to stick with the Bengals on this one. Like. It's going to be a brand new year, of course. Then you got Tua still at the helm. Then you got Tyree Kill, even though despite all the controversy that he's going through, then you look on the other side of the ball with Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, then even on the defensive side with um, Sam Hubbard and Trey Hendrickson. Then you you're you got a good lineup on both sides. Then you got who was it? They got rid of <clears throat> Jesse Bates, right? Yeah, we got rid of Jesse Bates. We got. And uh, Samaj Piri. Yeah, no, no Samaj Piri. Yeah, he's gone now. Then. I don't, I don't know really what's, what's up in the air with Joe Mixon. I mean, I don't know. Uh, but then there was another defensive player that left too. It was another, um, another defensive back. I don't know why I'm drawing a There was Jesse too. Bates and yeah. one other that I really you liked like Apple? too. No, that was the one I would have, I would have liked to see. Leave Me too. Because <laughs> I, it, I just feel like Eli Apple was always getting burnt, and he was always in the middle, of, penalties, middle of the, uh, the, the, he was in the middle of all the big plays. Mm-hmm. He was the guy that if there was a big play, my dad and I kept on screaming at the, at the AFC Championship game, like, "What the heck are you doing?" Every time, it's whoever's lined up across from him is the one that's getting the ball for a big play. I'm surprised you didn't but, hear. From hear me from my couch because yeah. i mean i was doing the exact like, Eli, same thing what are you doing literally i was but if you guys had a live camera on me during the afc championship game oh man you guys would have brought a bucket <laughs> of popcorn you guys would have gotten a show but well, now we've got watch parties we can yeah, be doing this football season better. so it's gonna be a lot of fun i just gotta remember to keep myself filtered is the yes, big thing yes and i'm gonna stick with my gut even though you got really really good odds for both sides of the ball i'm still gonna be biased and i'm gonna go cincinnati who day baby I like the Bengals. I like them making it pretty far this year. And mm-hmm. if this ends up being the case, too, you look at the, how this bracket's built oh. out. It looks like Bengals Chiefs Miri match there right go. there for the AFC Championship game. But we're going to go Ravens Jets. There is a big part of me that feels like there's too much hype around the Jets. I know Aaron Rodgers is a phenomenal, one of the best quarterbacks to have ever done it. Easily. I know that he has. One of the greatest football IQs when it comes to quarterbacks. If he's probably the greatest football IQ in football currently today. But I just don't know. I feel like there's too much hype. I almost feel like it's going to be a huge letdown for the Jets. I feel like maybe this this year they don't make it to the playoffs. Really? But I've got to go with my gut here and just say that all the hype is right. And it, I think that they did put together a lot pulling in Nathaniel Hackett to be your offensive coordinator. I think this could be a very good redemption tour for him. Uh, redemption tour for Aaron Rodgers, too. I think he wants to go out and win. He is determined that this is the team that can help him get to uh, the, the Super Bowl and win another one. And, of course, he's able to bring some pieces over with him. I think they've got some really good wide receivers to kind of go along with the bunch and everything. Uh, and then, of course, if Brees Hall can be healthy this year, that's a huge addition to keep back there in the backfield. Mm-hmm. An amazing running back. But then their defense last year was really what won a lot of games for them because their offense just kept on showing up as atrocious whenever their quarterback play wasn't fully there for them. Mm-hmm. Every once in a while, their offense would look good. They would have spurts, but ultimately their defense won it so much for them. Their defense is what brought them to the promised land and got them as far as they went. But I, I, I really I really feel like because of the defense, they're not really losing anything on the defense. And I think adding Aaron Rodgers is a huge piece. I'm going to go with the Jets. There you go. Don't so. forget also to mention, like, Aaron Rodgers originally coming from Green Bay now to New York. And another big thing to talk about is he's he's not afraid to play in the cold. Like, yeah. I know some quarterbacks, like, you get quarterbacks from, like, Arizona going out to places that are packed with snow. Then I know that plays a big effect on to to – Aaron Rodgers and even Lamar Jackson, I mean, that's kind of like a – it's a no biggie for them. I mean, yeah. that's – it definitely plays a big effect. Like, it's more than you really think. Obviously, with your shoulders, your every limb in your body, you get 
down the sub zero temps and you get cold, but I mean, at the end of the day, you just just keep doing you. Yeah, that would be a very tough matchup to to truly pick, but I like it. I think I'm I think I would go with the Jets on that one. Mm-hmm. But uh, let's jump back over to the NFC. We'll start up on the second round of the playoffs. Okay, we've got uh, Seahawks Eagles. Eagles. So Eagles finally jumping in after having their little bye week, going against the Seahawks. It's your turn. You picking them birds? It's a battle of the birds either way. Exactly. <laughs> oh man. Um, looking at both sides of the ball, obviously the Seahawks with Geno Smith, and then looking as for the Philadelphia Eagles with. Them, I mean, you got Jalen yeah, Hurts, Jaylen you got Jalen Brown, you got uh, why am I drawing a blank on uh, Devontae Smith? Yeah, you know, you've got you still have a stacked offense, like we just mentioned earlier, too. Keeping your offensive line was huge for this offseason. Mm-hmm. Jason Kelsey coming back for another year, uh, and then on your defense, you're not missing out a whole lot. I know you lost some pieces, but it's not like their defense wasn't stacked last yeah, year. Yeah, they were a great defense. and They were a healthy team last yeah, year, Yeah, that's too. a big thing. They they kept all their original pieces in the puzzle. But this is going to be a really, really hard pick just because I really wish we can jump forward to know exactly if it's going to be in Philly or if it's going to be this, in this, Seattle. This one would be in Philly in this would scenario be in Philly? because, okay. yeah, Philly would be a number one seed in this situation. True. So, so over in Philly... I'm I'm gonna stick with the Eagles on this one. I know that's a it's a really bold pick, but I mean obviously looking at last season, a battle of the birds again. They wasn't last year, wasn't it wasn't in Philly last year or wasn't I wanna say it was in Seattle last year. I'm trying to think. Did they did they go against each other last uh, year? Yeah, they did because everyone always kept saying that's the right. same thing about yeah, the birds. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, it, it would have been in Philly last year, but yeah, just because Eagles were number yeah, one seed, so they would have um, ridden it out at home. I don't but, know why my mind was thinking it was in Seattle, but um, that might have been in the regular season. Yeah, but, but um, I, I like the pick for the Eagles. I think yeah. the Eagles are going to come out f- f- swinging. swinging I, yeah. If we know anything about Jalen Hurts, it's that every year that that he gets some sort of. Uh, criticism. Mm-hmm. He's going to come out and prove that criticism wrong. Well, uh, we saw that time and time again with him. Last year, the big thing was that they were kind of putting the blame on him because he had the one bad play. But you look at his stats, he was the best player out of the entire roster on both sides of the ball. Mm-hmm. He was the best player in that Super Bowl. Literally. And I know I'm biased when I'm saying that about Jalen Hurts, but... It's the truth. It's, it's the truth. You look at the stats, he had the best stats. Yeah, uh, He had the one fumble that really screwed his team over, but he still fought back. And, and that came that game came down to the wire, so I oh, think yeah. that was a that was a really fun matchup. It was a really really fun Super Bowl to say the least. But another thing to even mention, looking at both teams, like I said, you got two phenomenal quarterbacks. They're not afraid to use their legs. Like both of these quarterbacks easily run like there's no tomorrow. Then same thing with, with the throwing aspect. They can launch a bomb on a dime, and this is going to be a really it's going to be a gunslinger of a battle. Yeah, can Geno Smith come out and have the season that he had last year? That is the big question, but no, I, I like the Eagles here. It sucks for the Seahawks, but you're going against possibly one of the toughest teams in the NFL again this year. Mm-hmm. So let's jump down to the Cowboys Niners. I just have a hard time going against that Niners defense, looking at Nick Bosa, and then you jump over on the offense. Uh, you know, Nick Bosa, I think they still have Fred Warner, yeah. uh, you know, stacked over on the, on the defense. So, uh, just with those guys leading it and everything going on over there on defense, I think that they're going to still going to have one, even though that they're 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 missing their defensive coordinator. We'll, we'll give them that, but I, I still like the Niners quite a bit. Uh, and then over on offense, I don't care what the what the uh, quarterback controversy ends up being. I think Brock Purdy is the guy. I think he can show up again. I I don't think that he just had a one hit wonder, but I could be wrong. But they still do have a little bit of backup this year Mm -hmm. where they still have Trey Lance uh, on the schedule or on the roster, and they have Sam Darnold sitting there. That's their expected number two. So that's that's a pretty good backup. You know, you've got two pretty good backups. So I like the 49ers quite a bit. And uh, as always, it's it's nice to be able to root against the Cowboys. So I'm going to I'm going to take the Niners. Okay. Uh, I love CD Lamb. I hate rooting against I, I'm, I'm never I'm player. never rooting against CD Lamb, but I'm rooting <clears throat> against the Cowboys. So we're going to go Niners with that matchup. Okay. Let's jump over. I'm not going to give you the Bengals again. We're oh, not, not going to give you that. Man. You you've got to pick. Do you want to go against the Chiefs again or do you want to go against the Jets again if you can beat the Bills? I I agree with you like you mentioned earlier there's a lot, a lot of hype with Aaron Rodgers now in the Jets, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with my gut here. I'm gonna stick with the Chiefs. As much as that hurts me to say, 
I'm going to stick with the Chiefs. I mean, another reason why I say this, you got obviously Patrick Holmes with Kelsey, with uh, Pringle, then everybody. They've had so much chemistry. Then you look on the other side with Aaron Rodgers and coming to a new team and having to adapt to this new team and try and find everybody's sweet spots and learn it quick. I'm not, don't get me wrong. Aaron Rodgers, he will adapt really quick. He's a phenomenal quarterback. But, like, I think this is where – veterans come together as over time compared to nothing against Aaron Rodgers, like I said, but this is something to where I think it just needs to stay in the beginning. And I think this is where the Kansas City Chiefs will shine. And obviously, as we've seen them play plenty of times, it doesn't matter if they're down seven points or 28 points. They can easily come back and completely keep that bus rolling on to Burger King so Andy Reid can have a burger. (laughs) Then, I mean... I'm still sticking with my gut. I'm still sticking with the Chiefs, as much as it hurts to say. I like it. I think it's it's tough to count the Chiefs out. I feel like they're going to make it to that AFC Championship mm-hmm. yet again this year. I'd love I just, to see an. I love to see a co- complete curveball, but I mean, I I don't think it's going to happen. And you know what? I like Travis Kelsey a lot. I mean, I I I don't know why. I think it's just because he seems like he has such an ego, but he really is a down to earth guy. When you when you watch him in different different interviews and stuff like that, he's more down to earth. Than what it realized, and I think he's more intelligent than what people give him. Uh, you know, yeah. so I mean, it's he's really smart. Uh, yeah, he's he's a phenomenal player, extremely smart when it comes to football. No, go um, roll and shut your mouth. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> but now it comes down to the Bills Bengals. This was a matchup we saw last year too. Mm-hmm. So is this is this all just going to be a big old repeat where we see everything fall into place? I do think with the the drama with Stephon Diggs, that's going to hurt. That's going to hurt the Bills a lot because Stephon Diggs is the number one option. Mm-hmm. Now, what, is Stephon Diggs in the right for what he was? No, not at all. He was not in the right. You, you don't sit there and cry about not getting the ball. If the quarterback doesn't see you open, he's not going to throw it to you. Yeah. You don't question a quarterback like Josh Allen. I think he played a phenomenal game. He's got unbelievable talent. Then you look over the Bengals. I think the only thing that that I question with the Bengals is their defense. So this is a matchup where I look at and I see questions on both sides. Are you going to have a team that's kind of falling apart because of drama again? Or are you going to, uh, or are you going to be able to piece that together? And then on the other side, are you going to have a team that's got a defense that's going to be able to do anything? Another big thing to also mention is everyone staying healthy. Yeah, yeah, stay, stay we healthy. Ran so much injury trouble. And, and I think a lot of that's going to be helped on the offensive side because they're going to have a better offensive line. I think mm-hmm. the offensive line started to click a lot more in the late in the season. Now you pick mm-hmm. up Orlando Brown, huge, huge pickup. So. Huge. I don't know. I'm, I'm looking at this matchup right now when I'm looking this far ahead. Nothing really matters anyways. I'm going to go Bengals. Why not? That'll so boy. I like it. Uh, of course, I know I, for me, I think the big big part of me rooting for the Bengals was Samaj P. Ryan. He's not there anymore, but I still Broke love Joe heart. Burrow. Uh, I do think that Joe Burrow is the smarter quarterback when it comes down to him and, him and Josh Allen. Mm-hmm. So looking at this matchup now, we've got Chiefs, Bengals. This would be at the Chiefs. Based on this scenario, and then the Eagles 49ers, this would be at the Eagles based on this scenario. So basically the exact same Literally. championship <laughs> setup that we had last year. And I think maybe last year still instilled in our brains because this should be mixed up more. You'd but think. you know what? It's way too early. And so this really doesn't matter. We're just putting, putting this out there for fun. But we're going to go ahead and jump on to the NFC championship and start over there. But before we do, let's shout out to another sponsor of ours, and that is Bro Throw. You want to look at these games and check out these games and go on and bet on these games, you can. I know what you're saying. You're saying, Josh, guess what, Josh? I can't. All right? I can't do that. You know why I can't? Because I live in a state that doesn't allow gambling. I live in a state that is a communist state that doesn't allow me to put money on a freaking game. Josh. (laughs) That's not true. That's not true. Because Brothrow is now the answer. You can go over to brothrow.com slash rising2. You can only join by invitation. And guess what? I am inviting you right now. Not only am I inviting you to go over to Brothrow to go put some wagers on some games, but I'm also inviting you over to our group. You can join the Rising to the Occasion group by signing up with brothrow.com. You go to brothrow.com slash rising2. That's B-R-O-T-H-R-O-W dot com slash R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O. What that does is you sign up for the platform 100% free. You do not have to pay a penny, all right? Not a single dime to sign up, completely free. 
All right, you go in there, you place a wager on one of these games. You look forward to the playoffs. Look how exciting this playoffs is. You're going to want to put a wager in on this. What's amazing about Brothrow, the reason why it's available to you in whatever state you're in is because it is not a sports book. All right, it is not. The way that you are betting, you're betting against other sports bettors. So this is a sports betting community. You're going in there, you're seeing what other people are placing uh, for for their wagers, and you can say, I want to accept that, or I want to decline that, or let me go and make up my own wager, put it my own price, and see if somebody wants to challenge me. All right, so it makes it a lot more fun because you're being more involved, you're going against other people, and like I said, you do not pay a penny unless you lose. Are you kidding so, me? So you're not paying money and then risking it, what you're doing is you're putting a possible amount in that you might have to pay, and then if you lose, you pay up, all right? And it is completely dummy free. Uh, you know, th- there's there's no there's no dummies allowed because the dummies are kicked out immediately. If they if you have to put in a dispute against somebody, it's going to be resolved. Brothrow is going to make sure that you get your money, and they're going to resolve the situation. There's only been a couple of times where I put in a dispute, and usually it's just like, oh crap, I'm sorry, man. Here you go, sent it over right away. No problems. You stay on the platform. Everybody stays on the platform. But if you don't pay, having a, a dispute open up to you, you can get into some trouble. So just make sure you pay up whenever you whenever you lose a bet. You have till noon central time, I believe it is, noon central or noon eastern. Uh, but I believe it's noon central the next day to be able to, to pay up your bets if you lose. But if you don't lose, guess what? You keep on making bank. Brothrow.com. It's an amazing sports community. You can go and check it out. Brothrow.com slash rising two. You can only join by an invitation code. And that is your invitation right there. Brothrow.com slash rising two. Go check them out. An amazing way to make some money, especially whenever we get into football season. It's going to be a lot of fun. How much more can you ask for? You, you just said free due to nay state. That may have been the best ad read for Brothrow I think I've had too. You had me at free. I, I, I threw in free. I threw in the fact that you can do it in every state. I threw in the fact that it's free. Yeah. Uh, and then I also threw in the fact that, you know, come and join because it's fun. And plus it's, you can it's do it against sports, us. It's a sports betting community, man. Yeah. It's, it's so much fun. Uh, I'm usually always throwing something in there, mm-hmm. and it ends up showing up in the – private group too so whenever you join our group you can place a bet against me you can place a bet against jeremy if he puts one in there mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff too so it's a lot of fun go check it out but let's jump over who made this last one was it me uh yeah so you've got to pick eagles 49ers are the eagles going to be able to repeat and make it to the super bowl or are the 49ers going to step up and say guess what brock purdy the sheriff is in town <laughs> we have a quarterback he got hurt guess what we've got a backup quarterback this year and are they going to be able to stay healthy enough to, to be able to make it? So who are you picking? Eagles, 49ers, NFC Championship, making it to the Super Bowl. The big thing you just says, keep healthy. That's going to be the big thing between both of these teams. I know looking at both sides of the ball, obviously with Brock Purdy, if he, if he gets a start, I know he's nowhere near as much as a – as a scrambler quarterback, if he, if he's under pressure, mm-hmm. then I know Brock Purdy's usually used to sitting in the pocket pretty well. Then compared to Philadelphia, if if he gets a wide open gap and he has nobody open, he's going to shoot for that gap and he's going to run and he is not going to stop. Like it's definitely going to be fun on both sides, but it's just hard to it's just hard to not go for the Eagles in my opinion on this one. Like as much as I would love to see a complete upset and have the 49ers get redemption off of last season, I I don't think it's going to happen, but I could be wrong. This is obviously this is a free ball guess for all of us. We got plenty of time for anything to happen, but I'm going to stick with my gut and I'm going to go with Philly and see them back in the championship. Going with bowl. Philly. Okay. Yep. I I'm like sticking the with the birds. I like the pick. Uh Man, I don't know. That's it's tough for me uh, because ultimately I don't think it's going to play out this way. Right. Ultimately, I don't think this is the playoff bracket we're going to get, and I don't think it's going to look this way. We got probably think, what, a one in a million. Odds. You know, but with the Eagles sitting there at the number one <coughs> seed, that puts them in a in a favor, you know, favorable spot. Mm-hmm. But let's jump over to the ASC Championship game. If it's down in, in Arrowhead Stadium again, and it's the Bengals Chiefs, I'll make sure to invite you this year. Let's go down there. Let's root for Joe Burr. Let's sit there and scream at the top <laughs> of our lungs. Maybe knock back a couple of cold, cold sodas. Off you know, me twice. We'll make sure to invite Brian so we can make sure and, oh, and get ourselves a nice little tailgate going. Heck yeah. We'll get a little rivalry going with the boys. Go down there. Have a good time. Go in there. Everybody's screaming. I'm telling you right now, Arrowhead Stadium, the loudest stadium I've ever been in. Mm-hmm. 
and I've been in some loud stadiums. Uh, I haven't been into some of the SEC stadiums yet that I want to yeah, compare it to. That's a big but, word. But I'm, I'm going to make it there. But, you know, we're going to go there, all right? We're going to be sitting at, in some good seats because you know me. I'm not I'm not a sucker for just buying into just let's get some, some cheap nope. seats, you know, just so we can see the game but not really feel the game. Right. I want to get some good seats. Sit down there. You've got the noise just compressing your skull, just crushing it. And you're going to have a throbbing head by the end of the game, but it's going to be worth it because you're going to go there and you're going to see the Bengals and the Chiefs come within a one-possession game. And you're going to see the Chiefs pull off another another win. Uh, I ultimately think that that's the way that this would go if it were up to me right now. Like I said, I think there's too many questions on the Bengals' side. I don't really have a whole lot of questions for the Chiefs because they still got Andy Reid at the helm. They still got Patrick Mahomes. They still got Travis Kelsey. Uh, Isaiah Pacheco was a, a complete phenomenal freak last year. I hate to say it. You know I'll be rooting on the Bengals for you in this you situation. Just, you just broke my heart. But the Chiefs are going to win it if that's the scenario again. And guess what we have again? We have another Eagles-Chiefs Super Bowl. Where have we Super seen Bowl. this from? <laughs> so I really don't like the way that we just now made this all play out. But I don't disagree with it right now because I think last season was too much on our brains. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing right now. So now we got the Eagles-Chiefs. We're going to have to debate about this one. If the Eagles and Chiefs go against each other for a Super Bowl, all right, this is for the all the marbles. This is for the, the marbles. second year in a row. The Kelsey's basing off again. You know, the last year that f that field was slippery. Mm -hmm. The Kelsey Bowl was just it was rambling. It was rocking. Mm -hmm. It was rocking. It was a really fun game. Two oh, phenomenal absolutely. teams. Two phenomenal performances, and it really came down to just a couple of plays. Mm -hmm. If you can just change a couple of plays, it went the other way. But ultimately. We've got this matchup again. Who do you think wins? Does Do the Eagles get their revenge and come back and win it? Or do you think the Chiefs stand their ground and they pull off two in a row? Man, this is this is so hard. Just You look at these teams, like, you, you want to see Philly come back with vengeance and just give redemption. Then I know, obviously, Jason Kelsey is not going to be anywhere like, like Travis Kelsey's on – He'll be pulling Ric Flair or, or whatever the situation be, saying, no, you're rolling, shut your mouth or whatever. <laughs> but, I mean, I want to go with the Eagles on this one. I, I do too. I, there's got to be an upset somewhere, and I think it's going to be in the Super Bowl. And I think it's going to be – it'll still be a close game. Don't so get me wrong. we're basically just saying look at a scenario <laughs> where you have the, the Kelsey Bowl again and you have two Super Bowls in a row with two brothers and brothers against each other. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, it's it's cool. You know, that was a really cool storyline. But now you have it in a second year in a row. Man, what, how, what a crazy scenario. If this were to happen, this is why I really want this scenario to happen because, mm -hmm. again, I'm leading it to who's the leader on that team, when it comes down to like you got to pick one guy, who's the leader on that Eagles team? And it's Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts is the guy. Everyone will tell you that. There's a reason why AJ Brown was like, I don't mind taking a step back and getting paid a little less because I need that guy to be on my team. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why guys rally around him, and it's because he gets pissed off for greatness. He gets pissed off, and he knows what what he was about to touch mm -hmm. last year. He was this close. He was this close. He fumbled a ball. He puts that on himself for that. He fumbled yep. a ball that got picked up for a touchdown. That sucks. Definitely. That sucks. That is ingrained in his head. You know what he's doing this offseason? Mm. I guarantee he is tucking that ball in and letting people punch it. See if they can punch that ball. Yeah. I dare you to strip this ball from Jalen Hurts in the Super Bowl again. Well, even, it ain't happening. Even look at, I was kind of shocked. I can't remember his first name, but for the Eagles, Scott. Yeah, you, yeah, Boston you Scott. Yeah, Boston Scott. You barely saw him in the in the Super Bowl. Yeah, like, so I, I mean, <clears> I just I just think you you look at it. The main main reason why I think the Eagles would win if you were to give them a rematch mm -hmm. is because of Jalen Hurts. I think Jalen Hurts is the difference maker in that that game. I think he could have. I don't think he could have performed any better. I really Absolutely. don't. I think the defense should have stepped up whenever they needed him the most. But I think because of Jalen Hurts with a rematch. I think Jalen Hurts is telling that defense, like, you guys are going to step up. Mm -hmm. And they're going to say, heck, yeah, we're going to do it. This is our we're time. stepping on, on, the, on the field for you, Jalen. Mm -hmm. um, because that is the leader. I mean, all over the field. And, and you can ask just about any guy in that locker room, and I guarantee they would tell you the same thing. So I like the Eagles, too. I don't think that this is necessarily the scenario, but if this were to play out where we have the exact same NFC and AFC championship game. Man, we're good. <laughs> man, we're, we are really good. But I also think with these odds, uh, just kind of, you know, I'm not sure about the odds. Something's definitely going to change. 
yeah, you can go back over to one on there. So, Alrighty. but yeah, I mean, this is basically what we have. So we've got the Eagles winning it all. This is our unofficial official bracket of the NFL playoffs, 2023, 2024 season. Do you think that we're going to see a repeat, uh, whether it be in the AFC championship game? Do you see a repeat there or in the NFC championship game? Do you see a repeat there? Ultimately, when it comes down to the Super Bowl, do you think the Eagles and Chiefs, with the highest odds to make it to the Super Bowl, do you think that they go for another rematch? And if they do go for a rematch, what is your pick? We want to hear from you guys, so make sure to comment down below. Also, that helps us out a lot with the algorithms and stuff like that. We thank you guys, you guys so much for sticking around with us, for joining us for another episode. If you haven't already and you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button if you are listening on apple podcasts spotify wherever you listen go ahead and follow us subscribe whatever it is on that platform and give us a five-star review that is the best way to help us out help us keep on growing we thank you all for your love for your support for keeping on keeping on and helping us keeping on and all the keeping ons but anyways we all thank you so much for your support and until next time